This is the Sky News Election Channel. Uh, Labor today had to fess up that uh, the deficit will be bigger under Labor over the budget forward estimates period. Uh, what Labor released today is not a plan, it's a pamphlet. Uh, half the document uh, is made up of pictures and the rest uh, is just uh, platitudes. All pictures, no costings. Uh, there is no outline uh, of um, costings uh, in the, the way that Labor is going to pay uh, for their promises. Uh, if you can't explain uh, how you will pay for your promises, you don't have a plan, you just have a recipe uh, for higher taxes and more debt, which will hurt jobs and growth. Happy to take questions. What do you make of, um, I mean, obviously, just two weeks about yeah. Well, it's just more Labor uh, weasel words. Uh, I mean, Labor today had to fess up uh, that they can't pay for their promises over the budget forward estimates period. Uh, what that means, I mean, the, that is code uh, for saying that we will have bigger deficits than the coalition over the four-year forward estimates period. Uh, what uh, Chris Bowen said today when he used weasel words like we won't have the same fiscal construction, uh, con uh, contraction uh, as the government over the four-year forward estimates period. What he's saying is that uh, the deficit will be bigger uh, under Labor uh, than what it uh, is in the pre-election economic and fiscal outlook. I mean, that comes, of course, after uh, the Shadow Minister for Finance, Tony Burke, uh, Penny Wong and others uh, have been out there saying that Labor would seek to pay uh, for their promises with budget improvements over the medium term, over an 11-year period. Uh, so while Labor had to fess up that they can't pay for their promises, while Labor had to fess up that the deficit will be bigger under Labor, uh, they still can't quite bring themselves to be straight and honest with the Australian people. They're still using technical jargon and uh, weasel words uh, to hide the truth. Uh, and the truth is uh, that Bill Shorten has been making unfunded spending promise after unfunded spending promise. And as we have been saying all the way through this campaign, uh, unfunded spending promises before an election cannot be delivered after an election or they will lead to higher deficits and more debt or higher taxes. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've seen Labor walk away from past spending promises, which uh, they realised they couldn't pay for, like the school kids bonus promise and the uh, promise to reverse changes to the pension asset test. Uh, we've now seen Labor admit uh, that the deficit will be bigger under Labor over the four-year budget forward estimates period, which is the period that actually matters uh, under the uh, chart of budget uh, honesty. And, you know, you've got to remember, Labor has already announced more than $100 billion in additional taxes which would hurt jobs and growth. And even after that, they still can't pay for their promises. And uh, you know, today we've seen confirmation of what the coalition has been saying for some time. You always say you're on a credible path to a surplus, but every six months the starting point gets worse. I've been worth 40 billion for this financial year now. What's, why should people believe that you're yeah. going to be any quicker getting to a surplus in uh, Labour? Well, that's not quite right. Uh, like in the uh, mid-year economic and fiscal outlook, in our half-yearly budget update before Christmas, we uh, projected uh, that uh, the budget would return to surplus by 2021, and we uh, are on the same timetable uh, for a return to surplus uh, in the budget that we delivered uh, a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, we did inherit uh, a very challenging situation from Labour. We inherited a weakening economy, a rising unemployment, uh, and a deteriorating budget position based on uh, an unsustainable and unaffordable spending growth trajectory. We've been uh, working to turn that situation around. The economy is now growing more strongly. Uh, employment growth uh, is now stronger. And the budget is on a credible uh, path uh, back to surplus. Uh, the decisions, the policy decisions that the government has made since we came into government in September 2013 uh, have improved uh, the budget bottom line. Yes, uh, we've had to deal with some global economic headwinds. Yes, we've had to deal uh, with uh, the uh, significant fall uh, in global prices for our key commodity exports. The point is that these are factors beyond our control that would have happened irrespective uh, of who was in government. Uh, there is absolutely no doubt that the budget position today is in better shape than it would have been uh, if we had kept uh, Labour's policy settings in place that we inherited on coming into government. Senator, do your emphasis on the four years, not the ten-year argument, I take it, is just that 
10 years is very difficult for any government to make any sort of reliable prediction out, out, out over the decade, and that's all it's an incredible one to look at. Well, firstly, the medium term is actually an 11-year period. Uh, so it goes from 1 July 2016 to 30 uh, June uh, 2027. And, um, I mean, LIBOR uh, shadows are on the record as saying in the past that 11-year uh, projections, projections over the medium term, are less reliable. And furthermore, uh, the Charter of Budget Honesty, uh, which uh, the coalition complies with and which LIBOR should comply with too, if they want to present themselves as a credible alternative government, actually requires for the fiscal strategy uh, with its uh, targets, uh, objectives and expected outcomes uh, to be laid out over a four-year period. Uh, now, you know, LIBOR today had to fess up that over that four-year period, uh, the uh, budget deficit would be bigger under LIBOR as a result of the many unfunded spending promises that they've uh, made so far. What they haven't told us is how much bigger. Uh, and uh, Tony Burke uh, today at the uh, press club will have the opportunity to explain to the Australian people how much bigger the deficit would be uh, under a shortened uh, LIBOR government. Uh, and I mean, the important point also is uh, that the, one of the things that the credit agencies uh, look at closely uh, is of course uh, the uh, you know, four-year budget forward estimates uh, period. Uh, and if LIBOR is saying that as a result of the decisions that they're making, not as a result of external factors, but as a result of promises and decisions that they're making and taking into this election, the budget deficit will be bigger than in what it is in the pre-election economic and fiscal outlook. Well, then that is clearly something that would put our AAA credit rating at risk. And finally, I mean, <laughs> LIBOR, when they came into government in 2007, inherited a $20 billion surplus and turned that uh, into a record deficit. Uh, now, uh, Wayne Swan, in May 2012, promised four years of surpluses, uh, only to have to come out by December uh, to fess up that there would be more deficits. Uh, so, I mean, LIBOR cannot be trusted over a four-year period. Why would anyone in Australia trust LIBOR's promises over an 11-year period? I mean, this... Uh, you can see the pigs fly. Sorry. Um, but when uh, Wayne Swan uh, had to uh, revise his uh, surplus projections, he blamed uh, uh, global uh, changes at the time. Yet you're using that yeah. same excuse, and that's okay. Well, that, that is not entirely accurate. Uh, so it is true that uh, when Labor was in government, there were external factors at play. But the policy decisions that Labor made worsened the situation. Uh, when Labor went to the last election, uh, they locked in at a time when our terms of trade were coming off, at a time when we knew that global prices for our key commodity exports were coming down. Uh, Labor locked in another wave of uh, unfunded spending increases on you know, things like schools, uh, hospitals, and other, and other um, areas. Now, Labor knew that this uh, spending spree was unaffordable. The policy decisions that Labor made in government actually made the situation worse, not better. And, <laughs> I mean, Labor in government, you talk about Wayne Swan. I mean, he is the genius that delivered the mining tax, which left the budget worse off. When we abolished Labor's failed mining tax, we actually improved the budget bottom line over the medium term by about $50 billion. I mean, what genius can come up with a new tax, which not only is bad for the economy, bad for investment and bad for jobs, but actually hurts the budget? I mean, you know, how often can you get rid of a tax and improve the budget bottom line? And that is exactly what we were able to do when we got rid of Labor's disastrous mining tax. And I mean, Labor is at it again. The truth is, Labor doesn't know how to manage money. People across Australia instinctively know that Labor doesn't know how to manage money. It always comes down to the coalition to fix up Labor's mess. The problem is we're still dealing with Labor's last mess. This is not the time uh, to put the same people back in charge that have created the problems that we're still dealing with in the first place. Just briefly on the LFP scandal. Um, I, I know you've argued this morning that the fact that the action that's been taken proves that the regulators up to its job, mm. up to its job. But do you accept that actions like this undermine faith in the banks and that there is now a great deal of public sympathy for the idea yeah. of the Royal Commission into the bank? Well, f firstly, the alleged uh, events that you're referencing uh, took place between uh, 2010 and 2012. 
uh, the period of the previous uh, Labour government. And indeed, uh, for much of that period, none other than Bill Shorten was the Minister uh, for Financial Services. Now, a lot has changed since then. Uh, not only did we have a series of uh, Senate inquiries into the banking sector and into uh, ASIC, we also had uh, the financial systems inquiry, which our government uh, initiated, which Labor opposed, which Labor said wasn't necessary. Uh, and we have made decisions uh, to increase the resources and increase the powers for ASIC so that ASIC uh, can do its job properly. That is what needs to be done. We don't need yet another inquiry to tell us what we already know. Uh, we need well-resourced uh, regulators with the appropriate powers to take action, and that is precisely uh, what ASIC is doing. The system is working, and ASIC should be allowed to, to do its job. Thank you.